So we went over the design for the abstract state space for the initial model. Let's now see how we can change the state value by using state transitions or events. And so this is a general principle about events. So we are interpreting our system model as an abstract state machine. So we can see how the state will actually go from one to another using state transitions or the events. Namely, we want to talk about the guards and also the actions for each events. The events can only occur if the guards are enabled, meaning that the guards should really evaluate to true. The same principle applies. And luckily, we only got two events to talk about for this initial model, thanks to its uh, simplicity. Let's talk about it. And the first one is to say initially, before the transmission, what should really happen for the state, uh, for the state value to really become? Well, this is the special init event. Remember, that's the unconditional events for inits, meaning that it should have no guards. That's why you don't see any guards over here, as if the guard is actually true. And we can do the exercise together about how this uh, should really uh, be specified over here. I'll talk about it in just a moment. Let's go over some hints together. Nothing has been transmitted to the receiver initially, obviously. And also the transmission process has not been completed, right? So these are the two hints for you to really specify in these events. And of course, the informal description over here are consistent with how we have described the protocol so far. Let me just do one more annotation and then I'll let you pause the video and do the exercise. Think about what we have said so far. We got the static part, we got the dynamic part for the model. And remember, so these are the two exercises we did in the earlier part for the lecture. And we got the abstraction mechanism meaning that we only got the initial configuration for the sender and receiver, and that's the final configuration after the transmission process has completed. And when we talk about init events, you can think about the post state for the init event should be the initial situation. That's one, th uh, one thing you can think about. Let me put it here. Think about this part over here is really the post states of the init event. The post states of init event. Symmetrically, this one over here will be the post state for the other events, which I'll get to a little bit later. Let's focus on this one. What should this be? We should really, well, there's no guard, meaning that the init is always available. Whenever you want to reset your system, you should definitely uh, invoke the init, uh, init event so that it will occur. What should be the actions over here? What you should really consider is, Based on the invariance that we spoke about in the earlier part, what should be done in the action part for the init event so that it can consequently result in this initial configuration before the transmission process is completed. You can now pause the video and think about it. All right, assuming that you thought about it, so we're gonna faithfully formulate these two conditions over here. Number one, Nothing has been transmitted to the receiver. If nothing has been transmitted to the receiver, so that means this part over here, the G should be empty. So this would mean that number one, after the init event occurs, the receiver part G should be should really become empty set. Right? This will correspond to this one over here. And the second part. The transmission process has not been completed. We, we want to indicate this. And remember, the relevant variable to consider would be the B over here, as we said before. So that one will be also straightforward. We'll say B is going to become false. So these are the two actions you should really uh, specify in order to make sure after the init event occurs, all the invariants will be uh, established. Of course, that's something we have to prove formally later as well. Alrighty, so that's the first event, straightforward, but let's now go on to the second one, which might be a little bit more tricky, but it's still very straightforward. Let's take a look. One thing to note, init events should be treated as, as like a special event, only for you to really uh, occur once to initialize the system. It, it shouldn't really happen often, because for your system, either reactive or distributed, you shouldn't really res, uh, reset your system often. Normally, you will only reset the system when there's any uh, like an like a unpredicted error, but that's something you want to keep in mind. 
So the only ordinary events we have for this model over here is so-called the final events over here. The name itself really suggests after the system has been initialized, all we're going to do is to expect all we're going to do is to expect the final event to really occur as soon as it occurs. The transmission process is completed. So that's why we said in the initial model, the transmission process is very abstract. It's simply instantaneous and also synchronous. And it has a guard and also it has some action to be uh, completed, right? That's something we should do. Let me give you some hints one by one. The first one, the entire file has been transmitted to the receiver if the final event occurs. When the final event occurs, so that means the transmission process would uh, would have been completed, in which case the entire file F has been synchronously transmitted uh, into the uh, receiver side. Also, this uh, you can think about abstractly speaking, there's no time duration between the uh, when the transmission starts and the, when the trans, uh, transmission ends. Second hint, the transmission process, once the final event occurs, will have been completed already. Right? So you can see these two are kind of similar to what we said earlier about these two over here. Right? That will be the hints. Let's now go to over here. Why don't we do one by one? A very simple warm-up exercise first. What should be the guard for the final? And of course, it could be a tricky question because it could be that the final events over here can be just like the init event, which is unconditional. It could be, but we never said that uh, uh, events cannot be unconditional, but it's just not very uh, common, but it's still possible. Let's do the first exercise for this one here. What should be the guard? Under what circumstances should the final events be uh, in enabled? That'll be the first uh, exercise you can do. All right, you can now pause the video and think about that. Already, think about the, what the final really means. Final means the transmission process is completed, meaning that before you can complete the transmission process, you should uh, uh, you should not have been started yet. Right. So that's kind of the very important uh, rationale for this. Even though the answer is really uh, trivial, but I would say it's also important to clarify this before the transmission. can be completed, it must have not been started, right? Hopefully that's very logical to you. And what we do is it must have not, have not been started, have not been started. And how do we specify that as a guard. Well, for that one there, apparently, the only way for us to know whether or not the process has been started is use uh, according to B. If it has not been started, that means B must be false. So this one over here should be B is equal to false. And one thing to note, you can see this pre-state constraint is exactly what will be established by the post states of the ints because init is going to let the b become false which will effectively enable the final over here right so final will only be enabled after we have initialized the system right it's uh, very logical and let's see this let me just uh, also do one little bit of annotation over here you can think about the ints over here is really to enable the final, as I said before, right? This one will also enables. And what about the action part over here? And for the action part, I'll refer you to the earlier two hints over here, these two over here. And it'll be very similar to what we did earlier to the init events. Of course, you're gonna be different value that should become. All right, you can now pause the video and think about what the answer should be for the action. Already, assuming that you thought about it, let me do the obvious annotation here. What we should get is, uh, think about this part here for the final situation, right? This part over here should be the post states for the final events. The post states of the final events. The, in the post states, we know that the sender's file 
remains unchanged, meaning that we just don't need to mention that in the action part. Remember, for the before after predicate for any action, if the variable is not really mentioned, that means the variable is not being modified by the action for the events in question. And all we got to change will be the receiver over here. We want to make sure the receiver file G is exactly a copy of the sender file F. That's what we're going to do. All right, so there are two things we're going to do. Let me just uh, put over here. Okay, let's put the answer. Let's go one by one. We're going to formulate the informal description. The entire file F from the sender side has been transmitted to the receiver, meaning that from the receiver side, the G over here has become a copy of F. So the G over here has become a copy of the F. And what about the second one? The second one there, the transmission process has been completed, meaning that we have to change the Boolean flag B over here from false to true. It is false when it is uh, for the for when the final event is in, uh, is enabled, but after its occurrence, the B should be set to true to uh, to indicate that the transmission process has been completed. So I'm going to say the B should be becoming true. Okay, let me just uh, write this a little bit better. Should be colon equal over here. Right, so hopefully everything is uh, straightforward for you. But it's an uh, initial model, even though it's simple, but there's still some uh, rationale behind the design, which I would like to explain to you. Let's now go back. I think I still got some points to make. In this abstract model here, we want to think about think about the transmission being instantaneous. Right, we only got the init events, which is going to initialize the G and also B to be standing by. However, as soon as the final event occurs, the transmission is simply just instantaneous and magical, but, but that's okay. It's only the initial most abstract model. We're going to refine what's going to happen in the middle for the transmission process a little bit later. That's really uh, the design rationale I've been explaining to you. So we are really expecting the later refinements to really elaborate on this communication and transmission process over here. So this will be instantaneous. All right, and then we are expecting the later refinements to really show how the transmission can be done asynchronously, meaning that piece by piece for the file over the computer network. Already, so far we have done specifying the abstract state space and also the events for our initial most abstract model for the FTP protocol. And the next step will be to uh, really show that the initial model is provably correct. But what exactly do we have to prove? Let's uh, have some uh, consideration before we actually get to do it. There is no refinements, so we don't need to prove things like guard strengthening, relative data freedom, and also divergence freedom. We don't need to. It's only for refinements, which we'll deal with uh, later in the refinements. So what should we do? We should definitely prove about the invariance being established and also the invariant being made, uh, preserved and also the data freedom, not the relative one, but the actual data freedom for the initial model. These are the three aspects we like to prove. And for the data freedom, I'm going to leave that to you as an exercise, as I suggest in the later slides. But for the invariant establishment and also preservation, it might be a nice opportunity for us to review about how they should be formulated and what kind of uh, uh, inference rules should we apply. They are turns out to be very straightforward to really discharge. I'll try to do some of them together with you, but for the remaining part, you should really complete them as exercises beyond the lecture.